Welcome back. Today on Real Reviews, we are here with the 2022 Honda Passport. This is the EXL model, all-wheel drive. And we're just going to go ahead and start real quick with the outside of the car. Let's take a look under the hood, what we have here. So first of all, in order to open the hood, I don't even know how to open this hood. It's like a little tiny lever right here. It's a little tricky. Got to kind of push it to the right. So right here in the middle, push it to the right. You open it up. And you got to grab this little bar and put it right here to hold the hood open. There you go. So it is a little bit dirty, guys. Sorry about that. This is a rental car. I'm not going to get in there and scrub it. But this is actually the engine in this car. This is a 3.5 V6 engine, 280 horsepower, 9-speed transmission. And once again, it is all-wheel drive. I kind of do like the way they have the shroud right here because especially when you're going to put windshield wiper fluid in, you pour it in here and it's kind of a little bit easier to not spill it, I guess you could say. There you go. I don't really like these too much. I kind of like the Durango where it had the, you know, the piston that kind of held it up. That was kind of nice, but you know, whatever. We got what we got. Batteries over here. Now, one of the issues with supposedly the Hondas and especially the Hondas of, I guess, like 2018 to 20 is that there is a problem supposedly with the battery. There's a battery terminal down here somewhere right underneath there that does get loose. It's not the top battery terminal. Supposedly it was down here at the bottom. So if you did have a problem with your car cutting off or if you had a problem with the display or with the um, infotainment system, something weird like that, you might want to get over here and just check and make sure that wire down there is secured or have your mechanic do it. And that might take care of all of your problems. Let's go ahead and close this hood. There we go. Boom. So there you have it. So first of all, let's just start with the front end of the car right here. I'm going to turn on the lights so you can see what those look like. Okay, so as far as the lights are concerned, you do have an LED strip right here as far as like a daytime driving light. And then you also have actual LED headlights on this particular vehicle. And then you have a nice little yellow marker light here on the side. And you would think that would probably be the blinker, but it actually isn't. The blinkers are actually down here at the bottom. So it's a little bit different. And I will show you that later on in the nighttime video so you can kind of see the way that they flash. So the lights already just turned off. Won't even let me really um, show you any more about that. So let's go around to the side here. It kind of does have like a little skirt, has like a little um, like a little air dam there on the front, has like a little kind of like a little uh, styling to the bottom of the car here. You have some 20 inch sporty looking rims. The mirrors, they do have the blinker in the mirror, which is kind of cool. And then inside here, you do actually have a warning light that will warn you if somebody is in the lane, you know, coming up next to you. So you don't get change lanes and crash into somebody, obviously. And another thing you do have is this will lock the door. You have the keys with you. And also, if you have your keys, you can just unlock it as well just by grabbing the door handle. Now, one thing that people did say, if you put this next to a cell phone, supposedly this doesn't work anymore. So make sure if you have your cell phone in your pocket, maybe have your keys in the other pocket, and then that should always work for you. So let's see, going back to the back here, see the way that they actually have, you do have a locking gas cap, which is kind of nice because some cars, they don't have it. And the difference between this gas cap and most, and let me just show you what it looks like underneath there real quick. So here's your button right here to release the gas cap right here. So you can press that button and then it pops open. Now this is a little bit different. It doesn't actually have a cap on it. it just has this piece here and that kind of just covers the top of it. It's capless. There you go, capless. And so I don't know, that's something to kind of get used to, but I guess it works fine. Just close it just like that. So there's that. And then back around here in the back, can't really show you the lights because, you know, obviously it's daytime. So down here at the bottom, you actually have your reverse lights and the blinkers are right here in the middle, integrated into the rear lights. You have dual exhaust, which is kind of cool. And um, you can see right here, it says all wheel drive, obviously rear windshield wiper, all of that good stuff. Rear reviews. There you go. Now this back door, it doesn't let you open it by itself at all. You have to just press it and it just has to open. Like it just doesn't let you open it by, by itself, by yourself. You can't just like pull it and yank it. I mean, I guess you could, but you're not really supposed to. So anyhow, that's the, that's the rear door. Here's the button to close it. And the inside here, you do have a little bit of cargo space. This is only two rows, so it's just the front row and the second row. Okay, so now it does have some storage space under here. If you just go ahead and open this up, you press this down, grab the little handle, have a little storage space right here. You can put whatever you might want to keep, like a toolbox or um, you know a tire inflator or something like that. And underneath here, you do have a spare tire. This is not a full size spare. It's definitely thinner than a regular tire. It's also completely different. Um, this is a 17. We got 20s on here. So how did that work out? I don't even know. That's your spare tire came with the car. Hopefully it works when you need it. Uh, what is this right here? I guess it's right here if you need to put some uh, fuel in the car, some type of oil in the car. I have like a little funnel here. I don't know. I've never seen that before, but there you have it. You got Honda gives you a funnel and I guess they give you a jack. It must be under here somewhere. I don't know what you got here. Is this a battery? Extra battery? I have no clue what they got in there. If you guys know what's underneath all of this, you can let me know because I'm not going to tear that apart. But anyhow, so that is that. 
you do have a couple little spots right here and right here. This one's deeper, a little bin you can throw something in. Have a little roll of tape there, another bin here. And I guess you can get some type of like cargo net you can put across the back here to kind of strap it in. And it does look like there's a little slot here. You can put something in to cover the back section so maybe people can't see really what you have back there. So you can close the door with either this button or you can close it with the remote because this is the remote right here just to show it to you. So you have your lock, unlock, you have your door open and close, you have your automatic start, and I don't know what that is, some type of panic button if you're freaking out. Oh, you know what? One other thing I have to mention right here, you have a power outlet, 12 volt. It doesn't actually have any plugs here. And what is this? This right here is for your seats. So if you want to fold down these seats, you can do it from the inside. Forgot about that. Or you can actually press this button right here. You can fold your seat. Ouch. <laughs> and you got the other one. Boom. Fold your seats down. Power outlet, seat folding, all of that good stuff. Now you do have two pistons on this door to open and close the door. So you have the button right here to close the door and you also have your remote you can use to close the door. I don't know if it has anything underneath it. I don't think it has anything under there. Let's just uh, press this button. As far as I know, there's no sensors underneath to um, open the door or close the door. Let's see. <laughs> There's no type of sensor. Okay, so there's no sensors like underneath as far as I can tell to like open the door or anything like that. But you do have sensors on the back here. So you don't want uh, to, you know, crash into stuff. You all have all your little sensors. And we'll go up to the front and we'll check out those sensors as well. So now, you know, once again, open it from the, from the button. Hold it down for a couple seconds. Press it again. There you go. Open and close. And so that's that. You have your sensors over here on the front. And then um, walk around this side. Now, once again, guys, this is a rental car. I did not crash into curbs. I didn't run over anything. I didn't damage anything, but you can see the wheels are kind of scratched up there. Okay, so if you want to start the car from the auto start, you're going to go ahead and press the lock button one time like that, and you're going to hold this button down right here. Lights are going to flash, and then it's going to start up for you. Now, something strange that I did notice is that the car actually sounds different when it's auto started versus actually really started from the button inside. And we're going to go over there. We're going to take a look at the inside right now. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at the inside of the car. Okay, so the first thing is basically when you use the auto start and you want to actually use the car, as you can see right there, to start driving and have to press the brake, and then you're going to have to push the engine start button. And now that really starts the car. So now the car is actually started and it sounds different. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but it actually changed as far as the way that it sounds. Okay, so we're just gonna take a look at what looks like inside of the car. Let's go ahead and take a look. So there it is, it's pretty spacious. It's not too bad at all. Nice little infotainment system there. There's the back, you can see the roominess. Now so there's the floor, the way that it looks down there, all of the chairs and everything. Now this is only two rows, it's not three rows. So I'm going to show you the back real quick first, see how spacious it is. So go ahead around to the other side. All right, so here we go. There's a lot of space back here in this back row. Now this back row, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't like, it doesn't really recline. There's no reclining or anything like that. There's no moving the chair forwards. Or Actually, there is moving the chair forwards. So this back row doesn't recline at all. This is far back as it goes because it does have the um, spare tire back there. But you can actually move it forward a little bit. Move it forward like that if you want a little bit extra room. And you could also move it back. So that's pretty much all it does. As far as the middle chair right here, you do have a seatbelt and a ceiling that you have to pull down and connect, which is kind of, I don't know, a little bit annoying. And back here, just to show you, you basically just have your control right here on the door for your window. You have your, your handles. You got your vents right here. And then you do have a couple of USB ports right here. Now, these are only 2.5 amps, so those are not fast charging. Just normal charging for USB. And then you have your lights. You can turn them on if you want to at nighttime. And then the other thing that you have here, which is pretty cool, you have a couple of cup holders. So you can fold that down. You have your cup holders. Put that back up. Now, this part, I don't think this comes out. None of this comes out besides if you want to just take out the chairs completely, which I'm definitely not going to do. And I'm just coming out. Just look right, right around here to the back. To kind of see the way the back is, what we just already saw. So that's pretty much it. So if you're sitting in the back, If you're sitting in the back, this is what you're going to see in the front. It's basically the way that it looks. You have your rear here. That's how it is. You got your panel right here with your cup holders, little spot to put stuff. Some like kick panels right here, which is kind of cool. 
And that's pretty much it. So that's it for the back row. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into the front and see what we have up there. All right, so here we go. The front seat where the pilot sits. Ooh, pull this chair back a little bit so we get a little bit of a better view. Let me grab this real quick from you. All right, so here we go. Starting off, we have the panel here. We have the window controls. You have your rear. You have your front. Both fronts are auto. You have your door locks. You have your door locks right here, and you also have your window locking mechanism right here. So if you press this button right here, it locks the windows out so nobody else can use the windows. Only problem is you can't use them either. You can't use them. You can only use the driver's side window, and that's it. So once this is locked right here, you can't control any of the windows. So just keep that in mind. Next thing we have right here is we actually have some uh, presets for the chair, which are pretty cool. And I'll show you those in just a second. We have our mirror controls, left, right, and this moves it around. Economy button, great for the highway, not so great when you're driving around a city, especially, especially if you want responsiveness. When you get down here, you have your parking sensor button. This turns it on or off. If you want your parking sensors to beep, if you're about to, I don't know, hit something in your garage or whatever. This is supposed to be to stop you from crashing, some type of like crash mitigation thing. I don't really know, but it doesn't do anything. When I press the button, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything anywhere. So I don't know if that works or not or what the deal is. And then you have this button right here. And as you can see, if I press it, it says road departure mitigation. So road departure mitigation on and off. Basically what this does is that tries to keep you inside of your lane. So you're not going into any of the other lanes. This is your traction control on and off. They do call it something different. You press this button. And it does say traction control mode, um, stuck vehicle, basically. See again, stuck vehicle assist, which basically that means traction control is off. And you can see at the bottom, it's off. So we just go ahead and leave that on right here. There we go. Traction control is on. No indication anymore. So that's that. Coming over to the steering wheel, you do have your, um, this is your controls for your, your radio. It also helps to control this middle display panel here, which we'll look at in a second. And obviously, you know, just basic stuff, home, back, that's for basic, mainly for your display panel. You got your phone controls here. And over here, you do have your um, cruise control. This is to set it initially, obviously to cancel it. This is to increase it or decrease the amount. And then you have your, um, these buttons right here. This button right here, this is all of your cruise control type buttons right here on your steering wheel. So you obviously have your set. You have your cancel, you have your resume button, and this is obviously going to be if you want to decrease the speed, increase the speed. And now this button right here, this is something that's new for me. I've never been in a car that had this before. I've never driven a car that had this. This is called the lane keep assistant. So if you go ahead and um, you press the main button, that kind of brings you back to the main area. If you want to turn it off, you can see it's kind of like popping up there. But this main button right here, it just brings you back to the main area and just turns off all of this stuff right here. Now, if you see it up right there, if you see right up there, it has the LKAS and the ACC. This ACC actually stands for Adaptive Cruise Control. And the LKAS is Lane Keep Assistant System. And what that basically is, the Adaptive Cruise Control, when you're, when you're cruising on a highway and you have cruise control on, this vehicle is actually able to slow down if you get too close. And now this does have a, like a button right here that allows you to get closer or further. So I think it has four modes. And we'll show you that when we get on the highway. Yeah, but it has four. There you go. You can see it's like four. And you could just limit it down to however many you want. So that's each one of those is basically how many spacings you are away from the car in front of you with the cruise control on. So if you have it with the, with all of the but all of those little we have with all of them lit up like that, it's gonna be much further distance than if you just have one on like that, pretty much. That's the way I like to keep it. So that will actually keep you from hitting the car in front of you. It'll slow you down if you get too close. So basically, once you put your cruise control on. All you have to do is have that on, have your lane keep assistant right here. And then pretty much the car is like almost driving itself. It's not really driving itself. And you'll see what I mean when we get on the road and we try that out. But it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. And I really like that. Now, if you don't only want this on while you're in cruise control, and you actually want it on all the time. You do have the button right down here that you can use. And that one, as you can see, road departure mitigation off a road departure mitigation on. So that'll basically do it all the time. As long as the lines are good on the road, it works fairly well. So anyhow, you have that. Here you got your temperature gauge, you got your fuel gauge. And up here in the center, um, you do have right now your distance, average fuel and range. I couldn't find a way to actually show the current mile per gallon. But anyhow, you press this right here. You have at different apps you can have on there. You have your trip computer, which we were just on. All-wheel drive torque, which I don't really even know what that does. None of these are like too fascinating to me or too great. You got your phone now playing and maintenance mode is the only other thing I'll probably ever use. See my tire pressure. 
give you a different tire pressure, which is cool because like on a Toyota, it only shows that, you know, either you have a leak in your tire or there's no problem at all. It doesn't really give you tire pressure, which I don't like at all. And then you got oil life here, which is basically shows you how much oil life you have remaining. I don't know that I would ever really, um, you know, use anything else on here on the home screen. Let's see what else we got here. Maybe the phone. Um, I don't really know. Seatbelts is kind of cool. So when you first get in a car, it actually shows you which seatbelts are buckled. So you can know, you know, if the people in the back have their seatbelts. If you have your seatbelt, see right here, if you clip a seatbelt, it's going to go ahead and turn green. There you go. So that's if you clip a seatbelt. And then you can just, and then it'll, it'll ask you to just press enter to get off of that screen. Now, last but not least up here, you do have your digital speedometer, which is kind of nice. I like having a digital speedometer. You also have your digital tachometer, which will show you your RPM digitally as well. So that's pretty much it for that. We get over here and of course we have the nice start button. I like that start button. That is pretty cool. But if we look down here, we don't actually have a shifter. We don't have a shifter. This vehicle actually does have an emergency brake, a physical emergency brake pedal. So that's kind of cool, which most of the new ones do not have that. I really like a real emergency brake, but it doesn't have a shifter. So this is what you're stuck with here. I mean, I guess it's okay. It's not really bad. You got your park right here. Just press button, reverse, you press this button in. You got your neutral, you have your drive. And then uh, S is like, I don't know, some type of like sport mode or standard mode, which you have these paddle shifters on your wheel right here. You can shift up and down, shift gears. And maybe if you're going up and down a hill, it might be helpful. You know, so you're not on the brakes all the time on steep hills. But besides that, I don't know, unless you want to drive this thing like a Lamborghini, I, I don't really see myself using those. And then on the dashboard, before I forget to mention, you do have your brightness controls right here for the dashboard as well for your display right here in the center. All right, so back down over here, we do have a button right here, which is kind of cool. Since this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, it does have different forms of traction control, I guess, for different environments. So if you press this button right here, you can see you have normal, you have snow, mud, and sand. So you can switch between those, and then you continue pressing that button to select whichever mode you want, and then you just give it a couple of seconds, and then it locks into whatever mode that is. So there you have it for your different traction control modes. And this button right here is what they call idle stop. Now, this is the button that actually shuts your car off if you're at a light or a stop sign or something like that, supposedly to save gas. So if you press that button, it has the idle stop off or idle stop on if you want it to be turning off all the time. I usually run it off because I don't like my car just turning off on me all the time. I'm not really into that. So we go over here. We do have um, a little cabinet right here. Inside of here, we do have another uh, charging port. We have a 12-volt power outlet right here. And we have another 2.5 amp USB. And then you also have a 3.5 millimeter input. So you can actually use the USB stick to have your media on right there. Or you can have a 3.5 millimeter input if you want to use like an MP3 player or something like that. Now just bear in mind, since this is only uh, 2.5 amps, that's not going to fast charge. If you want to fast charge, you're going to be using this 12 volt port with an adapter in order to be able to fast charge your devices. And you have this nice little slide and cover, which is cool. And one thing I just realized inside of here, there's like this little drawer, little tray that kind of slides around, put your coins in or whatever. I don't know what that really is supposed to be, but I kind of keep it out of the way. So there's that. Then you have your cup holders. And then over here, you do have a wireless charging pad, but it just doesn't really work well. So this wireless charging pad just doesn't work for me. I even tried taking off my case and it just didn't work. It'll start, it'll go on, acts like it's charging, the phone will say it's charging. And after a couple of seconds, it just doesn't charge. Now, I don't know if there's something wrong in here in this rental vehicle that is causing that problem or if there's like a general fault with those. So if you guys know, just leave it in the comments. Let me know if this thing works for you because it doesn't work for me. Um, anyhow, over here, you do have another USB slot. And that's also for charging or for media for the radio here. Also 2.5 amps. And you have another 12 volt outlet. You want to be able to charge something or plug something in there. And then coming up over here, you have your heated seats which if it's really, really cold, like it kind of is today, because today it is 47 degrees outside. Whoo, it is cold and sorry. That's kind of like why I was rushing when I was out there. Probably missed everything and messed everything up. But, um, you know, that's that's how it is. It's kind of cold out there. So anyhow, so you have that right there, your heated seats. And one thing I did forget to mention right here, go back to the steering wheel area. We do have our um, white windshield wipers here. So this is your rear. You can turn it on by just turning it this way, washing your window. If you go all the way, and then over here, you have your controls to kind of like uh, make it, you know, so it goes uh, intermittently and or you can just put it on if you want or, you know, wash your window, whatever. You know, just windshield wipers, guys. You know how to use windshield wipers, I would think. The one cool thing about these windshield wipers here is that they didn't kind of like a uh, screech when they go across the window. So I was glad about that. And we use them quite a bit. So that's one good thing about that. You do have your mirror right here underneath. You have your home link controls and you also have your auto dimming right there for the mirror. 
up here you have a glasses holder, you have your sunglasses holder. It doesn't actually have the little mirror right here where some of them would to be able to see the back seat. Why it doesn't? Did they break it off? Does it come with it? I don't really know. But anyhow, there's that. Then you have your lights. You want to turn those on at night. And then you also do have, this is for your uh, sunroof right here because we do have a sunroof on this one, which is kind of cool, kind of nice. So this actually is for your sunroof to open it. So we got, actually, we'll just go ahead and do this. There we go. Sunroof opens. Kind of nice. Go ahead and press it forward. And then you got your sunroof auto closes all the way. Then you have your um, you have your lights right here. So this is basically off if you don't want the lights to come on with your door. This is on if you want them on all together. In the middle, it's just automatic. So that's pretty much that. That's pretty much it for that. And you can see you have your speakers here on the side. I didn't kind of really show you that. Kind of cool. Speakers there on the side. And you have all your vents, a couple of vents on the dashboard. And um, it looks like you have some type of light sensor there. So you can turn your lights. Now, in general, I use these lights on auto. So they just come on by themselves. That's the way I like to use them. And um, that's pretty much about it for that. Okay, so we get back over here. We do have our air conditioning controls. Nothing too special here. You want to adjust the rear settings. You can press that for the rear mode. Or this is like basically just a synchronized mode, the way that we have it synced. And this is up and down for the driver, up and down for the passenger. You have your on and off right here. So basically, if you already have it set, you just like, you know, want to turn it off for a second, just go ahead and press on and off button. And that just turns it off. And when you press it again, it comes back on just the way you have it. And the only thing you want to go ahead and press is this interior air circulation button, unless you want to smell the guy's exhaust that's driving in front of you. Okay, so another thing to mention, too, is when you turn this off, it, it does actually automatically divert to outside mode. So you want to turn that on if you don't want the outside mode coming in and just even being off as well. So we'll go ahead and turn that back on. And that it actually stayed on, which I don't know. Just, you know, make sure you have your outside, your inside air circulation on so you're not breathing smoke from outside. And then you also have your fan controls right here. And you have your mode button right here for your, you know, if you want to have it upper, lower, feet, whatever, wherever you want it. And then you also have your front uh, defrost. You have your rear defrost. And it also does, uh, I guess if you're doing rear defrost, it's also defrosting your mirrors, it looks like. So that's about it for that. You have your, um, your emergency, your hazard lights right here. Passenger airbag notification. If somebody's too light, it'll tell you the passenger airbag is off. And then up here, you have your infotainment system. Now, this model, the EXL, does not come with navigation unless you pay extra for it. So right now, this doesn't have any navigation. So you can do phone. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and all that good stuff, which I didn't connect. Okay, so basically, if you want to see everything that's on here, you can press this button right here, and it kind of just shows it all to you, the different um, functions you have, different media you have, quick audio source change. And then you can also just swipe it right here. Because if you sit here and you're trying to press this little arrow, it doesn't work. You got to swipe it across. You see what you have in here. So pretty much, you know, um, you can see your messages from your phone. You get XM radio, FM, Bluetooth connections, USB, if you want to play USB, your Android Auto, whatever, some settings. And you have, um, oh, look, you even have AM on here on a totally different screen, which is kind of weird. But I think you could change some of that stuff around. You have your auxiliary, um, Honda music. I don't really know what all these are. Your clock. Let's see what clock does. Okay. All right, so there's your clock. That's kind of interesting. And then what else do you have here? Trip computer, if you want to see your trip, you want to see what kind of um, mileage you're getting. So this car right here is supposed to be 20 on in city. It's supposed to be up to 27 on highway and 23 combined. I mean, roughly we're getting, like you can see right here, we're getting like 23, but it's kind of like highway and city. When we did ride on the highway, we did get up to 27.8, which is actually higher than they even say it can get. And I think I don't know what the lowest is because we didn't really just drive around city, but I probably say I probably say it's pretty accurate what they're talking about. Like you can see right here, 19.5. That might be just city driving. So, you know, it's pretty accurate. And I think that this car gets some fairly decent gas mileage. So um, that's pretty much it for that. OK, so I do want to show you what this radio sounds like in order to do that. I do have to take my microphone off my lapel mic off to so be able to get a better um, idea of what it sounds like without trying to go through my lapel mic. Let me go ahead and take that off and I'll be right back to show you what this radio sounds like. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show you what this radio sounds like. We're gonna use USB is what we're gonna use right now for some songs so they're um, royalty free without getting any copyright strikes. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do right here, you press the USB button, if you didn't already see, press USB to use your USB. And then once you're in the USB, you can press browse and you can browse a lot of different ways as you can see right here. Current playlist, playlist, artists, albums, songs, all of that good stuff. I'm gonna use folders and I'm gonna choose my speaker review folder and this has my royalty free music in it so the first one we're going to try let's go ahead and try what is love right here by kevin mcleod there you go that's 
Kevin McLeod and not bad for this just factory stereo this isn't even a special version of the stereo this is just like the, the I guess probably like the lowest level of it it doesn't sound bad at all so in order to go back you do have to press the browse button and you're gonna have to go back again and select folders again and then select whichever folder you want right here and then you're gonna be able to select your song for some reason it doesn't just let you go back one level so we're gonna go ahead and try this this song right here this is vampire from YouTube this is what I like to use on all my bass speakers so the sound let's see what the um bass sounds like in this vehicle here vampire that's what the bass sounds like now if you want to get into the sound settings you can press the sound button you can adjust your bass and treble however you want you can uh, adjust all your different your subwoofer volume so the subwoofer is like all the way up on here so this is basically like max your balance your fader all that good stuff and then um speed volume compensation so basically the faster you go the um i guess it like compensates for the sound so automatically increase the volume as vehicle speed increases there you go set the speed of increase i don't know i guess that's set i'm not really paying attention to it though not something i'm really too concerned with as far as that goes all right guys so i wanted to show you the way the backup camera works this is basically it once you put it in reverse you have different modes you have this mode right here you have this mode right here you have the mode where it's kind of like looking down so you want to like see exactly how far you can get to the edge or whatever and then you have this right here where it shows all of your sensors around the vehicle so if any sensors are being triggered so like right now there's only a little sidewalk behind us a little curb so it doesn't really trigger any sensors so you can see this one is like a more wider view this is a, like a more of a narrower view it's a narrow view this is a much wider view you kind of see like all the way down here and all the way down here but it's kind of like curved and weird usually the one i keep it on is this one right here and that's the one that's the most beneficial for me. And I don't usually keep the screen on at all. Okay, so, so you could either leave the screen on or not. I usually just have the screen off. I don't usually keep that screen on. But if you want to keep it on, you can see where all your sensors are. See all your sensors on the back and the front. Now, the funny thing in the front, it only has sensors on the front sides. It doesn't have sensors directly in the middle. So in the back, it has the sensors on the sides and in the middle. On the front, it only has them on the two sides. So just keep that in mind if you're pulling up close to something. I don't know if it'll detect. Probably not right in front of you. But anyhow, there's that. And this right here, this is the, if, you, if you're worried about incoming cars coming right here, I guess you have that on or off. So basically right here, this is for us, like if someone, something is actually going to go behind the vehicle, if somebody's like you're in a, in a parking lot, somebody's going with a shopping cart, there's a car coming by, it actually tell you if somebody's coming in one of those directions, so you're not just backing up and crashing into something. So that's pretty much it for the backup camera. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and try to take this car off road right now to give you a little treat. So let's go ahead and do this. You press my button. Let me show you what this button does right here. Here we go. Hit my seat button. Here we go. Here's my seat button. I'm going to press number one, and you're going to see what it does to my seat. Go ahead and check it out. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it. Nice. Now, I'll show you a little bit better. Look at this. It, like, squeezes you in and moves you all around. And you press your other button. Sets you right back up where you belong. There you go. All right. So let's go ahead and try this little shifter here. Drive. Oh, another thing to mention, too, just in case you guys don't realize how this works, it's kind of like locks at each level. So you're like, God, why doesn't my thing go down? My thing won't go down. Pull it all the way up. Pull it all the way down. And then just set it to where you want it. And there you go. Don't break it. Because I almost did. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and take it off road. Off road. Go ahead and shift this thing over here. We're going into sand. Yeah, here we go. Hopefully you guys are ready for this. Uh-oh. Traction control is off for sand. Oh, man, this is scary. This is scary, guys. Should we, should we do this? Should we even go off-roading? All right, so here we are, guys, in the middle of the woods. Nothing around here but bears. Okay, here we go. Off-road. <laughs> A little bumpy here. A little bit bumpy here, guys. This is cool, though. Going off-roading this thing.
off-roading in a Honda Passport all-wheel drive. There we go. Go ahead and turn around a little bit here. So we're jumping on the highway right now to show you how this lane keep assist system and its adaptive cruise control work. And also show you how this vehicle can accelerate with the economy mode off. Whoa, this is a long turn. Okay, guys, so here we are on the highway. We have to pull off for a second because I forgot to take the plate off the back. We're about to get pulled over. Here we go. For a review. So I got it off. Now we have a chance to be able to accelerate. So let's go ahead and take a look right here. We're going to jump on the highway, see how this thing rides. So here we go. From a dead stop. Already in the 50s there. Not too bad. Not great. But you know, whatever. It's not a Lamborghini. Even though it has paddle shifters, it still doesn't make it a Lamborghini. So remember that, guys. Just because you have paddle shifters, you don't have a Lamborghini. So here we are. We're on the highway. It's not too horrible. Not too horrible. I mean, you can merge with it. It drives nice. When we drove to Miami, it was a nice drive. We got some decent gas mileage. We were getting about a... Uh, I guess close to 28 miles per gallon and we drove i guess to miami and back it was roughly i don't know close to 500 miles and um yeah so we got about 28 miles per gallon pretty close so that was actually over the estimated fuel economy of this vehicle so 20 27 and we were probably getting like i said close to 28 so yeah here we go we're jumping on right here getting up to speed 65 Let's go ahead and set the cruise control right here. Let's take a look. You want to set it right here. And then if you want to increase it, you want to get up to 70. We just press the plus button until we're right up to 70. There we go. Put on a lane, keep assist. And now it's actually on keeping us in the lane, supposedly. Here we look, look at the wheel. Look at the wheel. <laughs> it's going to tell me I got to steer here in a second. It's pretty funny. Now, I don't know if we can get the... um. On this, on this trip, maybe when we turn around, we can get it to show you where it slows down. With the adaptive cruise control, maybe we can get it to show you when it uh, tells us we have to slow down. Actually, when it, it, it automatically slows us down. So right now, the lane keep assist is actually keeping us in the lane automatically. Look at this. This is a turn. Look at the turn. Look at the wheel. It's actually keeping us in the lane. This is crazy. It's almost like it's really driving for us. So between that and the um, cruise control, there we go. Steering required. Look, look, steering required. Nice. So between that and the adaptive cruise control, it's almost like you have an auto driving vehicle, but you don't guys. So make sure you're driving because you will crash. It's not gonna drive for you, but it doesn't do such a bad job. I mean, look at this. I see, is it keeping us in the lane? Check it out, pretty cool. Just another thing to mention though, is that when you do get next to an exit, it's gonna try to make you exit like almost every time. So if there's bad lines on the road or weird lines on the road, it will try to follow weird stuff. So just be careful and be aware of that. But besides that, it does work really well. Let's go back over into the middle lane. Between the lane keep assist, the adaptive cruise control, the warning lights, if you're getting close to somebody, if somebody's coming up on your side in your blind spot. So here we go with the blind spot warning light right here. So your blind spot warning light, your adaptive cruise control, your lane keep assistant system. It's pretty cool. Some nice features on this vehicle. All right, so here we are. We're going to be merging right back onto the highway here. Another opportunity to try this thing out. So the lane keep assist system, adaptive cruise control, blind spot, warning lights, all pretty cool features of this 2022 Honda Passport EXL model. I really like those features, especially the lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise control. Those are really cool. I guess all three of them are really cool because especially if you're driving at night and you're tired, it just makes it so much safer for you to have those features. So it keeps you in the lane. It slows you down if you get too close to the person in front of you when you're on cruise control and also warns you if somebody's coming up in your blind spot, which all really, really nice features. There we go, blind spot. Nice, there we go. And now we'll go ahead and get over on the right lane here. You're gonna see how this slows us down. So we're already close to this person in front of us. Look, it already slowed us down to 69. 
because we're right now we're at the max interval you can have up to four intervals i usually just keep it on one but you can see there's a max interval right here it's way up there but it's already slowing us down so we go ahead and dial it in a little bit here and now it should allow us to go a little bit faster and there we go it's already picking up speed because that interval changed so now we can be a little bit closer to the car in front of us i think it's like about maybe two car lengths per interval something like that a car length and a half something like that maybe and um, it definitely works very well so we'll slow you down when you get closer to the person in front of you we just pull up here and we can try it again so now i'm already going too fast and look at that it just braked i did not break it braked for me right there that can be dangerous obviously if you're a crazy driver and you forget that you have that on you're driving like 80 miles an hour you have adaptive cruise control on you get too close to the guy in front of you i don't know what's going to happen i don't know what happens with adaptive cruise control there's like an animal that crosses the road i don't know what happens with any of that so that's stuff that you guys are going to have to experiment for yourselves this isn't my car but like you know i would recommend this car um if you want a car you know to drive around general driving it's definitely not like an off-roader or anything like that you're not going to be doing a bunch of off-roading with it you're not going to be driving fast with it or racing with it or anything like that it does have some towing capacity i'm not sure what that is somewhere around three thousand pounds so you know if you wanted to tow something you definitely could tow like a little boat or you know whatever you might want to tow with it you could bring some stuff in the back so it has a little bit of power 280 horsepower decent towing capacity all-wheel drive so you know you will have a good time with this vehicle and i definitely say if you're in the market for an suv you know fairly inexpensive suv this might just be the one that you're looking for so go and take it for a test drive see for yourself what you think of it and then you can always let me know in the comments if you guys pick one up if you have one anything you like about it anything you don't like about it because we want to help our viewers out there to be able to make the best decision when it comes to them purchasing their next vehicle okay guys i just wanted to do a quick walk around of the car and just show you what it looks like at night you see the 20 inch rims and tires led headlights led marker lights these bottom lights right here these right here are just turn signal lights as you can see and you can see also the turn signal lights are on the mirrors and here around the back what the rear lights look like I believe those are they look led i don't know if they are or not i'm not really sure so these are the turn signals inside the red and then we have a uh, white burst lights we have the dual exhaust on the bottom that's basically what it looks like here at night time with the lights on not bad not too bad at all i'm not really a big fan of the turn signal lights being on the bottom like that or the turn signal lights being on the i don't know i guess the, the sides are red in the back but it is what it is so there you go 2022 passport nighttime lights all right so here we are inside of the 2022 honda passport and you can kind of see what the lights look like in here when you're driving around at night so kind of what what i wanted to show you is what the lights look like at night so you see the dashboard it's pretty well lit up the steering wheel does have some it's lights on there as well for your cruise control and such lane departure all of that good stuff and you have your dashboard your speedometer and then you can see the lights on the door, on the door panels and such. Let's take a look right here. You have all your lights over here on your door panels, your lights for your mirrors and all of that good stuff. And then your steering wheel lights. And even up here, the sunroof lights are actually lit up as well. I don't know if there's any lights in the back. I don't really think that there are. And now these particular um, SUVs, I believe 2022 at least, they all have LED headlights on all of the models, as far as I'm aware. So they have LED headlights, and they also have some LED markers around them. So you can kind of see what the headlights look like right here, the LEDs. And if you put your high beams on, it doesn't really do much. Um, these are not as bright as the ones on the Durango, but they're cool. They're definitely cool. They definitely light up the road. It's a little bit foggy out here, too. So you can see kind of like what it looks like you put the uh, high beams on. I mean, it does light it up a little bit better, but really not that, not that big of a deal. So that's pretty much it i mean for the lights and the lighting inside of the car at nighttime driving you guys want to drive at night and also the backup camera also works really well at night and i'll be showing you that in just a moment here all right so here we are backing up this is nighttime so here's the backup camera you can see it works really well i kind of wish it had like a 360 degree view but even in complete darkness this camera sees everything so that's a pretty cool camera i really like that for backing up at night so you guys will be just fine 
driving at night with your LED lights, your backup camera, and the lighting that is provided inside of the vehicle. It seems to be quite adequate. Okay, so here is a 2022 Passport. These are the lights inside. This is the EXL model. See here is the um, infotainment system here. Does not have GPS on this model. It would have been an add-on. Here is the air condition. Um, different controls there. You can see that they light up. We have the shifters lit up right here. The other buttons, I guess they do kind of light up, but it's kind of hard to see at night, honestly. I don't like this type of shifter at all. It's really not my thing. And here we go with the uh, heads-up display here. You can see your different uh, things here. Speedometer, gas, fuel, whatever you want to call it. And then here are your mirror controls, economy button, the dreaded economy button, unless you're driving on the highway. Your mirrors, and here's your um your window controls. And then you have some type of, like, I don't know, presets right here. I don't think those are even lit up. Those even lit up? They are lit up. They're kind of dull. Can't really tell. So there's your window controls. And in the back, you do have a little tiny light for your window control. And that's pretty much it. And then the other, on the uh, passenger side, you have a couple of little lights right there. So that is pretty much it for that. Underneath here, you do have your uh, your home link buttons right here. One, two, and three. You have some type of, well, I don't know, this uh, auto dimming mirror, I guess it is. And then up here, you have your sunroof controls and your door lights as well. Then you also have regular light buttons. So here we go. Here's lights. If you want to turn your door lights, just slide it forward. And it turns on all of the lights inside the cab, which is pretty much just those. And then those back there, and you can pull these down right here. And your mirrors, you just have kind of like some little lights. And your mirrors on both sides, both sides have a you have a light on the mirror. That's pretty much it. That's everything. And then you got your sunroof. You look out the sunroof, can't see anything because it's nighttime. Okay, and one other light you do have, you slide this open right here, this little compartment. You do have a little bit of light inside of there. You get to your, uh, I don't know, your power outlets, your AC adapter, whatever it is to charge your stuff. Kind of hard to see right here, but this is a tiny little light inside of the center compartment here. That is kind of nice to have. And one last light here. You do have a light inside the glove compartment, which is kind of nice because a lot of cars don't actually have that. Okay, so in general use, like if you're on the highway or just doing regular city driving on, on normal roads, it's not that bad as far as bumpiness goes. But if you actually get out to any type of bumps, railroad tracks, bumpy roads, or for example, brick paving like we're about to get on here. This car, well, this SUV, I should say, gets really, really bumpy. It's surprisingly bumpy. It kind of was um, a big surprise to me. And here we go, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. It's almost uncontrollably bumpy in certain spots. And if you hit any big bumps, like a big speed bump or something, it's really, really bumpy. It just slams it. Look at the steering wheel. Take a look at the steering wheel. I mean, it's almost uncontrollable on some spots here. It's hard to keep it, like on the road, it feels like. So brick paving, guys, is definitely something you're going to want to be very uh, aware of if you plan on getting this passport. But like I said, highway driving, regular city driving is fine. But bumps, speed bumps, brick paving, uh, railroad tracks, I mean, you know, just put your coffee down and cover it because you're going to spill it. So here's a nice little spot lit up. And see if we could demonstrate this brick paved road a little bit better here for you. And I don't know if they have any type of acoustic glass in this or not, but it is noisy in areas like this. Highway and stuff is pretty quiet pretty calm and uh, overall good driving experience. Let's see we hit any other big bumps for you guys. Oh wow. I think I'm about to lose a wheel. Yeah. That's the only thing right here. One thing I really liked about the Durango, it had like a had like a bouncy but like stable ride it was really nice i really like that truck that uh that suv was really cool suv just to mention if i didn't mention already this is a rental just have it now for about uh 10 days so far just trying it out seeing what it feels like there we go look at that that's really bumpy right there i mean whoa, geez. i'll make sure i cut out the best parts for you guys i mean I'm about to lose a wheel here. 
This is crazy. So Honda, I think you need to step up your game on this model and I don't know, get some better uh, shocks, some better springs. I don't even know what you want to call it. It causes that to happen. So there you have it, guys. Try to stay off the brick paving if you're going to be driving the, the Honda Passport 2022 model or I don't know, probably any of these models. And let's go ahead and we're going to get on the regular road right here. You're going to see the difference. Huge difference. Whoa. Now we're on the road. There we go. Like nothing ever happened. Beautifully smooth and quiet. There we go. Now we're going to hit some train tracks. Let's check it out. And that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. But those train tracks that stick up out of the ground, I mean, they're really bad, really hard on this truck, on this passport. But regular driving, like I said, nice and smooth. You get on the highway, you put on your cruise control, lean departure, all of that good stuff. You're going to be cruising right along. When I drove to Miami recently, I just cruised right along. It was really nice with that lane departure thing on. I never thought I would use that, but I actually did, and it did come in quite handy. It did keep me like in the lane, you know, because you get a little bit tired when you're driving sometimes. You might kind of like weave a little bit, but that definitely did keep me in the lane. And also, if, it, if I was getting too close or whatever with the um, cruise control, it did kind of slow me down, and you could kind of manage that as well. But anyhow, that's about it for that part right here. It's smooth on the road. Smooth on the highway, real tough on bumps. All right, guys, we're going to try a 30 mile an hour brake test and see how this thing will stop at 30. If we're going 30 and we just hit the brakes. Look at the speedometer. Show the speedometer. 30 miles an hour. You ready? Here we go. Hold on. You got your seatbelt? Wow. I don't know. If it sounded like a wheel was about to come off, but it definitely stopped. It definitely stopped, and it didn't skid. So that was pretty good. Thirty mile an hour brake test, guys, in the rain. Because it's not in the rain, but it's definitely wet outside. Look at the street. Look at this. Look at the ground. It's definitely wet out here. So that was pretty good. I mean, if I had to rely on this thing to stop, I think I would feel pretty confident that it would stop. If I was going thirty miles an hour, at least, just slamming on the brakes, and um, yeah, it stopped. Didn't sound great. But it worked. So there you have it, guys. 30 mile an hour brake test, 2022 Honda Passport EXL model. All right, so here's some nighttime acceleration. This is with economy mode off, so let's go ahead and hit it. So it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you wanna drive this car, you're definitely gonna have to drive it with economy mode off when you're just driving around the city or whatever, when you're just driving around normally. If you want to drive it on the highway and you can definitely put economy mode on then you will get some decent miles per gallon so like right now supposedly i'm getting 24 um but i i mostly drove on the highway so like for example i just drove recently to miami and it was about oh, 200 and something miles and during that trip using economy mode i was getting close to 28 miles per gallon like 27 27 ish miles per gallon which was pretty good and generally driving around town, it doesn't show me like a current miles per gallon. I don't know if there's like a, a way that you can set that. I couldn't find it in any of the features up here. But I can just tell you that what it's telling me right now is 24 miles per gallon. Is it really 24 miles per gallon? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's less. But I can tell you it has been going down. So it's probably less than 24. And um, just to let you know, when you do drive this on economy mode, it definitely does not. It's not responsive at all i mean it just doesn't it doesn't respond when you press the gas pedal so if you want to drive it to where like it's actually working the way that it should be you're gonna want to use it with economy mode off when you're driving around town highway economy mode around town economy mode off all right so that's about it for this video guys this is the 2022 honda passport exl version hopefully you enjoyed this video Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell button so you never miss another video on Real Reviews. See you guys next time.